Hi. So let's start with you. Uh, how many of you just go to hear live music from time to time? OK, a few of you. And is there anything that frustrates you about that experience? Was that? Waiting in line. Waiting in line. Anything else? Yes. She's too short, so I can't hear the band. <laughs> <laughs> She's too short, she can't hear the band. Yes. Using it as a bloody opportunity for a conversation. Yes, conversations. So. Venue size? Venue size. Too big, too small? Too big. Too big. Ticket prices. Ticket prices. A lot of problems. Anybody else? Yeah. In the back. Phones? of not even getting it, something to capture afterwards, yeah. So for me, I was sitting at a bar, literally sitting at a bar in Soho, and I was with two other guys, and I'll get to them in a second. And like you, I just felt that there was something wrong. In fact, a lot of things wrong. The band was the Friendly Fires. It was around 2010. And it just struck me and the other guys, and we were chatting before the band started, that everything was wrong. Pretty much everything was wrong about the experience. Half the room was talking. And so the band's playing, and this, this is not a picture of the Friendly Fires, by the way. Any of you who know them, <laughs> they don't look like that. But this is, I didn't have a picture that I, this is indicative. And everything was, was, was wrong about what was going on because people were talking and people were texting. And you knew that they were texting and it wasn't about how great the band was, it was about something at work. And you could hear the clang of the bar in the background. Has anyone been at a gig where you can hear the beer bottles? In fact, it was so loud that it was louder than the quiet moments of the band. And yes, it was expensive to get in, and just thing after thing after thing. And I'm going to connect to mystery in a way that we set something up to help, in a very small way at the time, to solve some of these things. And then fast forward to today, and there are other problems, and we've all been to gigs <laughs> like this with this sea of phones. And in fact, I've been to gigs where I really can't see the band. I'm not all that tall, and I can't see the band. And you can see what's going on on stage through the phone or the, or the big phone of the person in front of you. So it, ju it just continues on. So in terms of mystery, we set up something not intentionally to be mysterious, but where we didn't announce who was going to play. We didn't announce where it was going to be. You had no idea who was going to be there. And so I'm going to just talk about that theme. But first introduce the people I was sitting with on the night. Now, this guy's name is Rocky Stard. <laughs> and I, it really is. And it's funny, it's his father didn't get the joke <laughs> until he was like, really? five years old, and Rocky start, it's a kind of weird person to decide to go into um, business with, but I did, and he was the sort of like me, the, the marketing guy, and then this was the other guy. He is as intense as he looks. He went <laughs> by David Alexander, a guy from Belfast who called himself Passion 8 Dave, and so it was the three of us at, at this bar pontificating about all these problems in, in live music. And this was where we had the first one, which was back in that year that I mentioned, around 2010. And it was at Dave's house. And we just asked everyone to be quiet. We just said that's the only rule from the first night. Dave was the one who played. There were eight people there. We just said, just focus on the music for a change. And something magical happened. No one talked. And it was so quiet in that room, you could hear the clock in the background, this big old grandfather clock, and you could hear it ticking. And none of us had been to a concert where it was quiet in a long time, if ever. Now having a gig in a living room is nothing new. It's been going on for centuries. But for us, it was refreshing. And that night, just all of us together, we felt, wow, this is a little bit different. So we did a second one, and we did a third one. And it just kind of started, started to grow. And so it ended up very soon where we had more people, almost like today, that we could fit. And so by necessity, the first mystery was we're not going to tell you where it is. Because if we announce it and it's my house and there are too many people, it's not going to be OK. 
So we didn't announce where it was out of necessity, but it also became a bit of fun. So you never knew where you were going to go, and still today, you never know exactly where, where they're going to be. So that was the first thing that we set up. And then, why do you think we didn't announce who was playing? Anybody? Because it's mysterious. Mysterious? To get people to discover new things? Yes. It was to get people to discover new things. It was like, well, I wouldn't necessarily go out to hear a beatboxer, but we're going to throw it onto our evening because we have three musicians play, and you can discover something new, or classical, or whatever you want. There was another reason that was even more fundamental. We never believed, and still don't, in headliners. I always thought it was strange that the big act, in the big letters, that they're the, they're the top act, and then the little tiny support act, we feel it so far that everybody is equal. All musicians are equal. We don't highlight anybody. And so you get three diverse bits of music, and it's all the same. And what it allowed us to do is just judge people on their merits of the music, not how many Facebook likes they have. So when these guys rocked up in 2011, I didn't know who they were. They went by Bastille, and they were terrified. So one thing about so far is playing on a stage like, it's not even a stage, on this, where nobody's talking and everyone's looking at you, is really unusual for mm -hmm. a band. Because first of all, all the lights are on you. Second of all, everybody's talking. And it's not quiet. And so Dan, the lead singer with the funny hair, he was really, um, he and the, all of them were nervous. They were just chugging wine in the background. And, <laughs> and, and I said, OK, not only that, like what Victoria did earlier, I said, you know, get people to high five each other and maybe sing along. Because I think it's always nice when people try to sing to a song. And they're like, really? And they played their song Pompeii, which again, no one in the room knew, because no one in the room had heard of them. And everyone started to sing along. And this was, this was kind of nice. So that was the reason that we just decided to cut to this sense of, of mystery. And I think I'm going to, I'll keep going, and then I'll, I wanted to intersperse a few videos to give you a sense. Has anyone ever um, heard of this concept before today? Oh, OK. So I don't have to play loads of videos, but I'll just give you a sense. Maybe we can cut. I want to show one thing in terms of discovery. I'll tell you a story just about the secret lineup. So those of you who have been, or if you haven't been, it's kind of fun. We just judge people on you know, whether we think they'd be fun to hear in a space like this. And um, we'll go to Yeba, which is this right, one. Cool. So here's an example of something that literally just happened last week. And I'll tell you the story in a second about discovery. So the point is, so Ed Sheeran heard this track. And he was asked on a major radio station in the States, hey, tell us about somebody new you've discovered. And he had just seen this video. And he said, Yeba. And the radio station, which is quite a big one, Z100, broadcast it. And lo and behold, a lot of people started discovering it. We got calls like, who is this person? Someone from Island Records, who is this person? And the number one agent in America said, I've listened to that video, which we can send around afterwards for you to see it. He said, I've listened to her 10 times in three days. And then Ed Sheeran on the radio said, yeah, it made me cry. Okay. You can listen. It gives me chills. You can listen on your own. But <laughs> the point was about not announcing who plays. It allows you a chance to surprise people. And in this case, we were really thrilled that we were able to give somebody a boost who no one had heard of. So that's the first sense of mystery, and it still happens today. And let's talk a little bit more about mystery. So who's attending? For those of you who have been, you really don't know who's going to be there. And I remember I went to one not long ago, also in New York. And sitting next to me, I'm a friendly person. I just started talking to the woman there. I had just had dinner with a friend who was an actress who talked about how difficult it is to be an actress in New York City, or any city, actually. And she went on and on. And so I sat next to this woman I just met. And I said, so what do you do? And she said, well, I'm an actress. And I'm like, gosh, I've just been hearing how hard it is. And she's like, yeah, it can be difficult. And so I said, well, you know, what are you doing to get yourself noticed? And she kind of just smiled and <laughs> didn't say much. And then she started talking a little bit about uh, friends of hers who are having a hard time. So we went on, and I started sort of giving her advice that she was not asking for. <laughs> 
And then she got up and excused herself and went to the toilet. And my friend Jody, who had been listening to this whole thing, leaned over and said, do you know who you're just giving advice to on becoming you know, a successful actress? I'm like, yeah, another music fan who's here sitting next to me. She goes, that was Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> I said, right. So I've been giving advice to Scarlett Johansson <laughs> on becoming a famous actress. Great, Rafe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you never know it is so far, but again, the point of everybody is equal, and anyone can come and rock up and just be part, part of our, our community. And there she was. So we talked about where it, it, it could be. Uh, you know, we've done things everywhere. This is in Oslo. So people didn't know where they were going to go, and it was the top of a ski jump. And so it was hard to get up there, but you, you, you got up, and then there's a little room at the very, very top that fits about the same amount of people as in here, and they had, they had a great gig. So I think you can churn some, anything into something special with the right people. But again, this was a mystery, and this was very, very recent. So... There's something else that happens with a community, which is people, you know, we're, we're now we've grown and we started in London and now there are 300 cities, gigs are happening literally every month. So if anybody's traveling, uh, you're in Melbourne or Mumbai or Paris, just, you know, if, and if you like this sort of thing, check it out. But one thing that happens is we can't and we don't want to control everything. But if something's going wrong, then the community tells us. And so in Austin, Texas, of all places, uh, the person leading it there wasn't really you know, feeling it. The music that was going on was not so good. It was just her friends. She was getting drunk beforehand. And there's nothing wrong with drinking, but not about doing it before you put on one of these events. And so uh, somebody went from Dallas, unbeknownst to us, snuck in and filmed the whole thing and sent it to us because we had heard whispers of it. And as soon as we saw this footage, this mystery revealed, we shut it down because it wasn't right. We asked just for that people are respecting the music and bringing the magic back to it, not destroying it. So it's interesting that when you build a community, I don't know if any of you are involved in different communities or want to start something, but if you have a set of rules, and ours is simply no talking, respect the music, put on stuff you love, as soon as people break it, it becomes interesting how the community helps you fix it. Uh, this was also funny. Uh, one day, uh, about two years ago, uh, the prime minister tweeted about us. And I guess what happened was someone from his office was in there hearing about it, and they selected the person who was emceeing on the night, a guy named Ras Fernando, <laughs> to uh, win this award that they give someone for volunteering every day. And, that was really cool until you saw the comments. Uh, the first guy said, foreigner. <laughs> the second guy's like, shocked he knows what a gig is. The third guy said, I warned you the title of liar of the century, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you never know who's going to tweet about you. Sometimes it's not really the best thing. <laughs> yeah, and then they, it, it, got, it got ugly. So. I think I'm going to sh just show um, for the last minute and then open up for, for questions. Another video just goes back to the comment about diversity. Just show Reaps. Has anyone heard of Reaps 1? Yeah. One person? So, great. So, we like to surprise people. And this guy, uh, normally we were known for music. He came in and he did his first ever performance without speakers and stuff. And he told me later his performance before that was to 10,000 people at a, at a festival. And I'm like, really? And just the sense that in a room, surprising people with a mystery, because all I said was, this guy is going to present is the next performer. He went on to be studied. His brain is now being studied by UCL University. <laughs> I'm serious, because they don't know how he does that. If you close your eyes, you think you're at a club. Uh, we can probably cut. And uh, he just was invited to Harvard to talk about voice. So, you know, you never know what, wow. what's going to show up at something like this. And that's, that's that sense of mystery. Amazing. Everyone enjoyed it except the house cat who ended up puking on somebody's leg. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the sound didn't go down with the cat really well. So that's it. Wow.
you know, start something with a bit of mystery and go do things you love. And that's what we've tried to do, just like here at Escape the City. So uh, thank you. I open up for any questions. Hi. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Uh, and I noticed that you recently started uh, charging. Yes. What has the reception been from the community? Here? Challenging question, dude. But yeah, no, it's a great question. <laughs> it's a great question. So, so far for the first four years was basically free, and that's why I wear a hat. I would mm. pass the hat around, literally. And we're in 300 cities. 292 of them are still free. And well, you put money in the hat, which goes to the artists, but. This went from taking one hour a week to five hours a week to 20 hour a week, and we just couldn't sustain it without taking some money in. Uh, so it would have died in London without some fixed fee. So we decided to charge 10 pounds. It's still bring your own drink, which I think uh, for anyone who knows what drinks cost, you can bring your own bottle, and all of them are, are pretty much that way. So it's to help us get to the point where we can be sustainable. Uh, I also, about a few months ago, we were literally needing some money, and we were lucky enough that Richard Branson has invested. And so that's given us two years to figure it out to get to break even, which is the goal. What, what has the reception been? Oh, sorry, that was your question. Uh, <laughs> shockingly, no complaints. Nothing. Everyone said, yeah, of course, you should charge. Um, and, you know, some people would pay us like a pound each, which didn't make sense to hear talent like that, or I didn't, you know, but James Bay, Bay who performed, or Hosea performed. So we just kind of said, really, you know, is it really that much five each? So the point is, there's been zero complaints. Uh, people kind of expected it. And a lot of people just said, what took you so long? But we were surprised. We were really nervous. Yes? Um, I was just thinking, is there a selection process? Because you always get so many applications, both yes. for venues and for artists. Yes. How Yes. So it's basically trying to be fair. So, you know, like in Istanbul, if any of you want to go to So Far There, they get 4,000 requests for every gig, and they can fit about 75. And, and so they just do it by random, randomized. We try to range it by age, and, uh, and when we started, it was more about if you liked music, and we would ask you a few questions, like how many gigs do you go to uh, a month? Oh, sorry, you mean selection of the venue or the people? Because we also both. So it, we try to do it basically people at random. Venue, a anything, anything, literally. It just has to fit at least 50 people sitting on the floor, and the host has to be kind of chill. <laughs> yeah. And the artists? The artists, we have a review committee. Anybody here who loves music, come up to me afterwards. We welcome anyone. You, we just have like up to about 10 people listening. And you just vote yes or no. Would, would you want that in your house, yeah. basically, is the question. Ignore if there are a lot of likes on Facebook, please. We try to avoid a lot of pop, but it's pretty much anything else. Other questions? Yes? Um, you said you, like, um, did the effort. Yeah. Before I did, like, industry support, like, up-and-coming artists, because I make my bigger artists. So the majority is up-and-coming musicians. Uh, we are not a record label. The support we have is we create a video, and sometimes if they ask, we've helped bands get management, or in some cases, signed to record labels. I remember you know, Benjamin Clementine? Yeah. He won the Mercury. So he played. He wasn't all that well-known. And then you know, there may have been someone that night in the audience who discovered him. So it's more informal than uh, formal, if that makes sense. But we try our best to help. Yeah. Oh, that was it. Up. Oh. How can you bring so far to a city where it's like this? Literally, just talk to me or any of the team. Uh, just email us if you think of it. We're welcome any city. We just launched in some cities that I can't pronounce the name of <laughs> or never heard of, and it's, you know there's music everywhere. So literally, just get in touch. Me now or afterwards. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's pretty simple, uh, as you've seen, but we do have a bit of vetting, and there's a, a few things to do that we just can talk about it 
afterwards. Where are you from? Romania. Romania. Yeah, cool. So we're in one or two cities in Romania, and we'd love to, to talk about doing more. I have a question. Slash yes. Congrats on oh. 500 cities. Hmm. 300 500, cities, 500, 500 gigs. Concerts, yeah. 500 concerts, 300 cities. How does that change in terms of the operations of so many gigs? How do you manage that? You know what, it's just a community thing. And people, as long as they're putting on good music, uh, yeah. we empower them, like if you're starting somewhere in Romania, to just do their thing, like you do with Creative yeah. Mornings. Just, just do your thing. There are, to the first question, there are some cities where there's paid staff, and they have a more of a process. It's like in London, they did 100 gigs in November. It's a lot. But the majority of them do one a month, and, you know, that's doable. Oh. Cool. And your yeah. attendees, is it all self-selected? You the community are, and you said it was quite random. And yeah. You also didn't invite Scarlett. No. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's totally self-selecting. And um, you know, we just try to be fair and, and rotate it. And that's why we do more in London, because there were so many people. People were waiting 9, 10, 11 months to get into ones in London. And we just said, we're tired of saying no. So we started doing more of them. I think the main thing is that you create an environment like this, and people come together for something exciting and in, in a small way. And it, it's kind of worked. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, oh, yes. Like, what's the bigger... The ambition has changed. When we first started, it was to get the world to shut up <laughs> <laughs> at gigs. And now I've ruined. I cannot go to a gig. I went to one uh, last night at 229 Club, and everybody's talking. So it was really just as fans to get people to be quiet. And then it became to give a little boost to the question over there to artists' careers. That kind of became the second one. And... Now, I think it's to foster and nurture this community. So again, to the first question, I would love it if anybody who's involved in SoFar, if one day we can get them a job in music, if that's what they want, or with SoFar, if we can expand to that point. So now it's, it's just to create this environment around the world and make it accessible. Thank you. Sure. Around afterwards, so if anyone has more questions yeah. or anything else you want to chat about, we'll be sticking around here. Sure. Right. Thank you so much. Welcome. This is amazing. Bye. Welcome. Thank you.